Okay, so the next step in our poster design is bringing over our EPS vector assets that we made in Illustrator, modifying existing typefaces that we found, and saving them as an EPS with everything else turned off. So that's why I organize in layers so I can easily turn off things like the line art. And save them as an EPS to the desktop. So I have two different EPSs here. I have the modern font or the modern typeface and the more hand done kind of serify one. Make as many EPSs as you like in Illustrator. And then when you bring them into Photoshop, you just drag and drop the EPS right into Photoshop. And that will bring it in as a smart object. It will keep all of its vector traits so that you can size it, stretch it, do what you want with it, just like we did with your logos, with your black logos, right? So I have these two options that I designed for the melting macabre kind of flag title. And I wanted to do this because I'll probably use this as a title card for the exhibit we're doing as well, right? Now, once it comes in, it doesn't mean you, you have to keep your, uh, illust your spot illustration where it is. But it's handy to see kind of how it wraps around. Remember, this is all based on our sketches and our different ideas of type blocking. And you see how that kind of fits pretty well with the melting macabre type blocking. Now, as a vector, you can also do things like give it a stroke. And I'm going to try what's called a center stroke this time, which kind of splits the difference from the outside and the inside, or an inside stroke, which can work. You can do things like um, coloring, you know, with a solid color, with color overlay, or with a gradation, with gradient overlay, or you can do a mix of both. And you can play with the angle, you can play with the colors in that gradation, you can play with so many of the different aspects of it, the scale of it. Let's do something like that and then put the red on and then take the opacity down on the red and then we can dissolve it. Ooh. You know, so just lots and lots of, of coloring effects you can give it. And that's just with color and strokes. You can also give it a drop shadow. And I just have it on a gradated uh, gray background for now. I don't think I like that dissolve, but maybe I'll try color dodging it or just keeping it normal. You can also give it a texture. So remember, you have the texture option while still keeping it a vector, and then it can look like it's, it's textured. And by doing an inner stroke, even the, the outside looks textured and beveled, right? I can also give it an outer glow. So let's see, I have kind of a crazy outer glow here, set up from my spot illustration. Let's try that at normal mode. Take the size down. Spread it out. So you can see how that works. Computer's running a little slow still, but it kind of renders these so you get a sense. Now, because I have red as the dominant kind of fill, maybe I want to do the opposite of that. There we go, for the cast shadow and for the um, 
for the glow around it. And then there's a slight texture to it, not too strong. And when it prints, it will, it will look like that. If you want to play with the texture options, you can always play with its level of depth and make it even more subtle. There we go, made it a little more subtle there. But I like how the clean vector shapes, you know, when I cleaned up this text, when you put the texture and bevel on it, it just really emphasizes everything you do, especially with the drop shadow behind. And that's just on a gray background. So all of that is done on the smart layer that you brought in, just a solid EPS. So that's the EPS that all those effects can be brought in on top. And so one layer that's a vector that can be infinitely scalable, that can be moved around and worked with, it has all of those features built into it. So that's pretty nice. Okay, now I'm going to save this and I'm going to work on the next aspect, right? Or that's my kind of hand done font or hand done type treatment. Let's see what that looks like on my Where is it? My modern one. So I can take my modern type and I can steal all of these effects. And this is the way to do it. So I don't lose them from my other layer. I'm going to duplicate it. And then I just move those effects onto my modern type. And what I have to do is I have to limit the stroke or change it to an outside stroke because my modern type is so much thinner. So I can just adjust these settings. But if I like how they're working on one solution, I can carry them over to another solution. Maybe I play with the gradient overlay. Let's go more full rainbow. Let's go more neon. So these are all options we have. I think I like that. And then maybe I'll play with this color a little bit. I don't know, I want it maybe a little brighter. Yeah, so it's maybe something like that, and then play with this color, and maybe lighten it up a bit. So it looks modern, but still looks pretty bold. All right. So some different games we're playing with these, with these type solutions. And you can always check it on a gray background, on the white background. And I'm going to duplicate that and then fill it just with my paint bucket with solid black. I'm only at 29% opacity. Here we go. Because just like your illustration, your type, you have to think about how it will look on various backgrounds. Now, what if I want to fill in the background, like inside these letters? Well, this is open type. So to do that, I have to take the, um, the vector layer, make a duplicate of it, turn off the effects, and rasterize it. I can rasterize the layer. I don't necessarily want to rasterize all the layer styles. And then I can simply um, use the magic wand with contiguous turned off. I'm sorry, contiguous turned on. And then select the empty space. And then I just need to add in the, the spaces of enclosed shapes. So things like inside the B's, inside the R. The A's almost have nothing there, so I don't need to worry about that. I think that's all of it. All right, then I can select the inverse and then edit fill 
with a color or with white. I'll just do white for now. So we get just a solid, you know, stencil of the type to go behind my type treatment, right? And then that itself, I can put effects on and mess with those. So I'm just going to keep that in place for now. And then I might make a duplicate of that vector type, put it up over the top and just turn all the effects off so it's darker. And then just use that as an opacity slider to darken all of the, just the clean vector elements to it. It's a great way to kind of animate type too, kind of make something look like it's glowing. Just to play with the color holds around the, the type, the outline. Okay, so you're happy with that. You save, you keep it open in Photoshop. And I'm going to go back to Illustrator now and build the next type. So I have to do the My Belittle Donkey thing here. So I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to lock it. I'm going to turn this off. Well, maybe I'll keep it on, lock it for the time being. Everything's locked, so I need to create a new layer. And this is going to be new text assets for the bottom. The bottom text. And first of all, I have the cream puff. I think I've already set that in. So I'm going to use the type tool. This is all just review, just with solid black. I'm going to type in lowercase my. And then I'm going to use the cream puff typeface I brought in. I'm going to make it nice and large. Now I'm going to try to do this from memory instead of trying to just map right on top of the existing My Little Pony um, logo because I want it to be my own and based more on my sketch. And that means I don't need to be such a slave to it too. So I can kind of squeeze the typeface and play with it. And just think about what looks best. So there's the my, and then I need some sort of rainbow. So I'm going to go ahead and use the pen tool. I'm going to do this on a new layer. I believe the rainbow comes from around the my. So I'm going to start there, end here, do a nice curve. Right. Go back and then close it off with another curve. It's the top of the rainbow. And then connect it. So I have a nice clean vector shape. With type you want the cleanest vector shapes possible. Then instead of trying to draw that all again, I'm simply going to use the large selection tool, click that path, copy it, Edit, paste it in place, right? Oops, that didn't work. Not sure why. So copy, edit, copy, edit, paste in place. There we go. I have a duplicate. And I'm just going to put it over the top. But this one, this is the first time I've done this. I'm going to make it white, not black. And then I'm going to edit, paste in place again. Bring this down and decide on the width of these elements. So I have this rainbow to use, right? If I turn off my sketch and if I put the my on top of that layer, you can kind of see how it works and then I can move that. So I have a little my. I have a little rainbow, and then the little donkey. <laughs> so let me turn the sketch back on. Just got to figure out how I'm going to fit that all in. All right. We shall see. And then I'm going to use that friendship is magic kind of font or that MLP typeface. Under text assets, add a new one. 